because Disney had such a bad 2022, do you think that they intentionally sabotage themselves every decade? Doesn't seem like a coincidence to me that this happens to them every 10 years. So, if you look at the history of Disney, it's not a simple uphill climb. They put out their first run of films, starting with Snow White and Seven Dwarves, and they got like five movies there that are all classics. World War II hits, and then they have a decade of these totally forgettable wartime era films that nobody watches, nobody remembers that they came out. Then the 50s happen, and all of a sudden, you're getting Alice in Wonderland and Peter Pan and um, Sleeping Beauty, and they have this another solid run. And then you get to like the 70s and the 80s, and it's, it's like considered the dark ages of just kind of like forgettable films, not quite as good and underperforming you get to 1989 the little mermaid comes out and they, they got little mermaid lion king aladdin beauty and the beast come out in the span of like seven years just incredible run that was my childhood i had the best the best era of disney movies all dropping right there wow it's incredible then you get to the the zeros and it's like dinosaur chicken little um Home on the Range, like, shockingly bad Disney movies. And even ones that are a little bit more kind of classic Disney underperform. Then you get to the end of that decade, beginning of last decade, and suddenly we have, all of, we have Tangled and Frozen, Wreck-It Ralph, and they're awesome again. And it's this wild up and down that it's like this pattern that they keep kind of going through. And, it, and there's other things that kind of tie into it, too, of... You know, Pixar had great runs, and they have not so great runs. And so, question is, are they intentionally sabotaging themselves? Is it a coincidence? Like, how does this keep happening? I, I think at the end of the day, um, I mean, no one intentionally sabotages themselves. You don't set out to make bad movies. Like, hey, let's spend $50 million on a bad film that makes us look stupid. Let's have, like, cows making jokes about cow udder implants. Isn't that a great joke? No, it is not. No one sets out to make a bad movie. No one else sets out to, like, sabotage themselves. But I think that the problem that you run into is that when you're on top of the world, you want to re repeat the success. But the success came from a certain... taking a certain amount of risks and a certain fresh energy to it. And then you do that, you only have so many ideas that fall into that same category, and then you have to try something new. But if you're trying to play it safe, then you try and repeat what worked before, but it didn't. what worked before wasn't just copying yourself. So, like, you kind of have these ups and downs because you kind of have to have a lull to be able to willing to, to take the risks to keep on going. And when you're successful, all of a sudden, there's much more of an investment in everything. Everyone, like, you want to keep that going. And the sh shareholders and the CEOs and everyone has this pressure to keep maintain it. And that environment is almost what causes the, the breakdown. Because you, you don't have wild amounts of creative creative energy coming out of board meetings with the shareholders. It comes from people that like love movies. Like you, you read about the origins of Pixar and it's like a bunch of people that loved animation and they loved technology and they were trying to figure out how to do new and wild and different things and they didn't have a ton of oversight in a certain sense. Jump forward 15 years, they're acquired by Disney. They've had all these hit films and there's this expectation they're going to keep putting out hit films. There's all this oversight on top of them now. I don't think that's, that's good and conducive to continuing the process. Also, part of it is that human talent isn't an easy to isn't easy to reproduce. Every piece of human talent is unique. So you have someone like John Lasseter, who is this incredible talent. There was a big part of why Pixar and its rise to fame, and then it was a big part of the last uh, decade of Disney, and then he's out over bad behavior. I don't know what he did or didn't do. I'm not suggesting that he should have kept his do job because he was good at it despite bad behavior, but he's very good at creating these broadly accessible 
animated films that are for all ages and everybody likes them. And there's something about the way he does things and the way he runs story groups that produces a specific type of film that really resonates with people. And him being gone, you can't just replace him with someone else that does the same thing. You replace him with someone else that has a different skill set. And that's part of the problem is that you... It, people have these windows of time where they just have extreme creativity and then sometimes they lose it. Just think of like, in a very narrow window of time, George Lucas came up with Star Wars and Indiana Jones. It was just like, came up with all these insanely good ideas in a very narrow window of time and then didn't really capture that magic ever again on the level that he, that he did in the late 70s, early 80s. It was weird. But people have these windows where it's just sparks of brilliance and the right context around them of just the right amount of freedom right amount of feedback and you get to a point in time where maybe you have yes people around you and they're not pushing back and so you're becoming a little bit indulgent there's a lot of those things that kind of factor into it that make certain environments very conducive and then you play out all your good ideas and like Disney right now I think part of the problem is that they're they're in the business of safe bets well, you don't come up with a fresh new idea by placing safe bets. You have to take risks. They don't want to take risks, so they keep adapting former films into big live-action things. They keep acquiring new hit IP, buying new IP, doing sequels to hit films, but you can only do that so long until you've drained everything of all the good ideas. And if you're trying to create... All the same number of movies, plus a full set of content for your streaming platform. You're draining everyone and everything. And there's only so many good ideas. There's only so many top-tier writers. And if you're spreading all of them thin, overworking all of them, the quality overall drops. So it's, it's a lot of different things. It's not easy to say, like, what's the reason that's going on? I, I think some of it's just... You have an era where you have great talent in their prime, and then they get older and they're not in their prime anymore. That talent goes on to work somewhere else. A new CEO comes in and the environment changes and it's not quite the same. And like right now, Disney's trying to put out too much content because they've got a streaming service and they got shareholders that they're demanding that you keep cranking this stuff out. And so they're going for safe bets. They're not taking risks, letting these top tier filmmakers go out and do something original. And you're gonna, they're gonna run out of things to sequel and remake very soon. I think that's all. I think that's a big part of what's all going on with this stuff.